Okay, good afternoon. Thanks for coming out. Uh, just a brief recap on a Missouri game. Uh, spoke about it in the post-game uh, press conference. Uh, I think, first of all, getting off to a fast start is critical in every game, but especially on the road. You know, we had great field position, and we were never able to do anything with that field position. I thought that really kind of set the temperament of the game. Uh, the next thing which I also uh, briefly spoke about is it's a line of scrimmage game and uh, I thought we were dominated on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Uh, it is what it is. Um, that will not be tolerated here at Tennessee. And uh, <clears throat> I thought that, uh, you know, any time a team can come in and rush the football against you for over 300 yards and, you know, we had less than 100 yards uh, rushing uh, makes it extremely difficult. Um, you know, I said the formula for this team to win is is pretty simple. We have to overachieve. You know, we can't beat ourselves. We're not going to be talent-wise the best team we play, but that doesn't make us the best team. You know, the best teams for that given day win, not just best individuals athletically or uh, individually. And so we have to be a team that overachieves, plays disciplined football, and uh, we weren't able to do that inordinate amount of penalties, which again is unacceptable. We spend too much time uh, in practice with a full officiating crew. We're talking about the discipline that it takes to win football games. And, uh, you know, we've done a really good job uh, at m most stages of the season. And uh, that wasn't us Saturday night. Um, you know, everything's based on, first of all, how you play. You know, how you compete, you know, how you strain, how you play for 63, which we talk about in our program. You know, it's how you're able to play with the discipline that it takes to play winning football and our players understanding that. And that's what we went back and really studied that is how we played the game, how we competed. You know, the fundamentals, the fine details. And that's something that uh, we'll continue to stress just like we do uh each and every week. I think right now we're also really we're dealing with the realities of building a football program and we're dealing with the realities of a football season. You know, and there's natural adversities that the game and the process presents itself. And that's what we're dealing with right now, whether it's injuries and being on your third quarterback, whether it's, you know, the schedule that we have, you know, the nicks, the bruises, the, the, uh, mental grind that it takes, the lack of depth, whatever it is, those are natural adversities that occur throughout the course of the season. And everything is going to be based on how we finish. You know, again, we put ourselves in position to be playing meaningful games. Every game is meaningful from here on out. And uh, so everything is going to be defined uh, on how we finish. Uh, you know, another great opponent, another talented football team coming in here, uh, up-tempo, uh, team with the mentality to run the football and uh, so again great great challenge but I will tell you this it's uh, it's great to be home uh, and play in front of our crowd this week so I'll answer any questions you may have How many, do you think Auburn's uh, offense has some similarity to, similarities to Missouri or any other offenses you think well I think <clears throat> there are some similarities but there's some marked differences as well and I think it's the different personnel groupings uh, that they get in with. You know, they're not, you know, again, I say it is the, the missed term used in college football is the spread offense. I, everyone has a de different definition of what the spread offense is. It's kind of the evolution of the West Coast offense back in the day. You know, everyone spoke about it, but, you know, what's a spread offense? Is it shotgun? Is it no huddle? Is it up-tempo? Is it 10 personnel with four and five wideouts on the field? You know, what is it? You know, and so um, where they challenge is they're able to get multiple personnel groupings and uh, they play with a high level of physicality. And then, you know, the, the, the dimension that Nick Marshall brings uh, to their offense, he's a dynamic football player. And uh, he can run it, he can pass it, and then Jeremy Johnson does a great job for them as well. So, you know, they cause you a lot of matchup problems. Butch, where, where are you? Who do you think your team is? You're about body language and seeing them eye to eye. Talk about injuries, physical, right. up, emotionally beat down, wearing tear the season. Are you concerned your team's out of gas? I'm always concerned, but uh, we have great character in our football program, and I'm going to appeal to their competitive character. You know, pride and heart matter. And, uh, you know, I met with our, our uh, 
players staff yesterday and everyone's obviously disappointed and they should be you know we didn't play well and uh, that's all of us you know it's it's everyone has to be accountable for their self-determination you know everyone's accountable for their preparation and how they perform you know we talk about pride and performance all the time it starts with the coaches it starts with everyone in our football organization and our football family <clears throat> and I know everyone was extremely disappointed but not discouraged and uh, we're playing for a lot in I like the way our kids, the feedback that I've received from them. And we'll come back today and we'll be ready to go. There's no reason to be. You know, we're fighting for a bowl game. You know, we get an opportunity to play in 102, 455 in, in Neyland Stadium. You know, it's an honor and a privilege to play at Tennessee. So I don't, that should not be an issue. And, uh, but you always talk about that with your teams. Did you feel like you, you guys did not have the passion? You talked about it after Alabama. Right. Felt like they had it to start the game with Missouri, and it just because of the way the game went, went away from them. You feel like you're, you're I did. I passionate. we had a great week of preparation. You know, I thought we were emotionally ready to play, but so much of it is creating, you know, your own opportunities and your own momentum. We were never able to do that. We drop a touchdown pass. You know, that flips the game. That flips the momentum. You know, we didn't have very big, very many explosive plays, you know, generating three and outs. We did a great job to start the game, you know, and it's 7-0, you know, with about 12 minutes, 11 minutes to go in the second quarter. So, you know, it's being able to sustain, I thought, the overall focus, you know, and, you know, we didn't have anyone step up and take hold and take hold of the football game. And that's what you have to do. And these are all... You know, these are all learning experiences. You know, when you look at all the experiences that we've had to this point of time, both positive and po both negative, they should really enforce what we're building here. You know, the mentality that it takes to play week in and week out, the toughness that's required, the team chemistry, the competitive character, the effort, the energy, the passion, which you just spoke about, you know, and the discipline to do the little things correctly. And, and I think what separates teams what separates people is the willingness to do the things that nobody else wants to do. You know, everyone can do them, but nobody else wants to do them. You know, those are the small details. Those are the little things. And, you know, like I said, we're going through the realities of building a football program. You know, really teaching our players the standard, the expectations. So uh, that's not going to be a crutch. You know, we want passionate people who expect and deserve to win week in and week out. And uh, I know we have a great, great group of kids, and they'll be ready to go. What you talked about Saturday night being kind of a, a learning experience for Josh in his first start. Just what do you think he took from it, and where do you think he kind of now goes from there? Well, I think you take a lot of things from it. And as you know how cerebral he is, you know, just like we as coaches, he dissects every single play. And uh, some really good experiences and some – some experiences that we need to correct and move forward and not make them twice, which he will. But you know, there's one where, you know, we're in the one minute drill, you know, run out of bounds and stop the clock. And you know, it, there comes a, a point in time where it's two yards more important than getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. And we turn the football over. Another one, we throw a deep ball and you know, the receiver's covered, throw it out of bounds. It's first and 10, learn from it, play the next down, put the play on the shelf, and now we got second and 10 and away we go. Those are all little things that, you know, you can rep and practice and kind of replicate it in game-like situations. But, you know, when they're live reps, you grow up and you learn from it. So, you know, I think the experiences that he gained obviously should continue to move him forward. Well, it seemed like you guys used more five wide receivers than usual, and even four wide receivers with, with Johnson instead of Downs. Was was that a, a, maybe using Dobbs to kind of open up the passing game, or is that just unique right. to Missouri and thinking you guys could have It was a, a combination of a lot of things. Uh, it was trying to put the best 11 players on the field to win the football game. You know, I think some of it is, you know, we don't have – a lot of competition, unfortunately, at some positions. And we have a standard in performance here at Tennessee, and we don't perform up to that standard. Uh, we have to find alternate ways of, of uh, different personnel groupings. I think the next thing is you're exactly right, you know, trying to play to the skill set of the quarterback, 
Um, so I think there's a number of things that went into that decision and some of the different formations that you saw and, you know, will continue to evolve with Josh as our quarterback. You've been really competitive against Georgia. You beat South Carolina in these last two games come on the road. Just how much of a cumulative effect is that when you're playing a ranked team each and every week? And does that have anything to do with kind of that progression? Well, if you deal with the realities, you know, it is what it is. And the schedule is the schedule. We have to play it. And we expect to win every football game. Is it a grind? Yes, it's a grind. You know, not only me mentally, but physically. You know, and getting yourself up to play your best performance week in and week out versus the best of the best. You know, we're going, and, and a lot of the those have been on the road in great hostile environments. But that's not a crutch. That's not an excuse. That's life in the SEC. That's life at Tennessee. And, uh, so, but it does, in, in reality, it does take its toll, but it's a great learning process. I talked about this last week, and that, that's part of that process I spoke about, is we're youthful, not only just in 24 now, freshmen playing, but youthful in the learning curve, you know, of really what it takes, you know? And then I think the other thing is, is, you know, when you play well against Georgia and you beat South Carolina, you're not sneaking up on anybody. You know, everybody watches those games. And that's all learning curve. And, and for a, a lot of these individuals, it's the first time being in these situations. And that's when I talk about, you know, we're going through the realities of building a football program. You know, I want it now. Let's make no mistake about it. I want it now. Our players want it now. Our former players, our Vol for Life's want it now. Our fan base wants it now. Our administration wants it now. We all want it now. But I see the positives each and every day. People in our industry that really study the game see it. You know, I see improvements each and every day. You know, some days larger than others but I see improvements and sometimes you don't see it in the wind column and as a head football coach, you know, I have to take the emotion out of it and I have to look at it, you know, are we doing the right schemes? You know, are we putting players, you know, in positions to be successful? Are we getting the most, are we extracting every ounce of value that we have in every single one of our players? And then where do we need to improve? You know, where are our deficiencies? We have to correct those through development and through the recruiting process. You know, it is what it is. And uh, we're gonna do it right. And we are making, we're making great strides. But we have to put our heads down, eliminate all the clutter, and just keep getting better as a football program. And I'm as encouraged right now as I've ever been because I see growth, I see maturation, I see, uh, attracting the best of the best student athletes who have great competitive character that want to be in the process of getting Tennessee football back. So uh, I'm extremely encouraged. And uh, so do we have a lot of work to do? You guys see what I see. But I'm also encouraged by where we're going. Because you talked about chemistry several times, your offensive line mm -hmm. is the, the most mature part of the team, at least age-wise, and, and yet they don't seem to be. right. Is there a, is it chemistry, is it missed assignments, or can you put a finger on it? You know, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think we put a lot of pressure on them, and uh, we should because they played a lot of football here. But I've said it when we walked in the door, I said it after spring football, and I said it in August, and I continue to say it. We have to be more physical as a group. We talk about the power of the position. You know, when you look at when you're building your program, most of these individuals played as true freshmen. So they were already set back one year in the development phase of the strength and conditioning area, the mentality. You know, our players are up four days a week at 6 a.m. doing developmental lifts. That's where a lot of your toughness, that's where a lot of your strength is born and developed, you know, in that area. So then all of a sudden it's competition as well. And, uh, you know, we're going to get back to doing what we do. Full padded practice, live practices, and we're going to be a tough football team. And I know this, those individuals understand that they didn't perform well. And I think you got to give your opponent credit as well. You know, also, is they're playing against some very, very talented defensive fronts. You know, everybody recruits, you know, in the SEC, you know, all the teams that are successful, they have great defensive fronts. You know, that's what I've come to find out in a very relatively quick early. You, you, win, you win with a defensive front. 
And so they've been challenged going up against the best of the best. Sometimes it's not all them. It may be a back missing a read. It may be the quarterback not getting us in a proper play. It may be where the play's blocked for four yards and we get four yards and we need to have the ability to make somebody miss at the second level. It may be a tight end. It may be a wide receiver on the perimeter. So, you know, everyone wants a point towards the offensive line, but it's really, it's the same thing. It's 11 players, you know? So I think it's a combination. I think it's uh, being in predictable down and distances. You know, when you don't win first down efficiency. So I think it's it's a combination of a lot of things that go hand in hand. But uh, they're great, competitive young men. Uh, they understand what they need to do, do to get better, and they're hungry. They were all in my office on Sunday. You know, and, and they understand. They know. And so they'll continue to get better, and we still have a lot of football left to be played. We're talking about a couple of drops now for Josh Smith. What's kind of his, where's his head at, and what's he thinking right now? Well, I think he just has to continue to progress, and I think he's going through the maturation phase of a true freshman. And, uh, you know, Josh needs to take his practice to the games. You know, Josh, I'll tell you right now, has the best hands on our football team. You know, he's extremely competitive. Um, he brings it every day in practice. He's extremely difficult and hard on himself, which we want. That's a mark of a great competitor. Now it's taken the practice field to the game field, and he's a young man with a tremendous amount of upside, and uh, he'll be fine. You know, it's just it goes through those things where, you know, he's trying to make a play, and he doesn't, he doesn't catch the ball with his eyes. You know, he tries to run before he catches the football, and those are all – Unfortunately, those are all growing pains that we're going through with, with all of our players, and not just Josh, but a lot of the true freshmen. It just so happened his mistake was magnified because you know, it was in the open field and it was a touchdown. But I believe in Josh Smith. He's going to be fine. Can you talk about the passion and momentum you play with? Are there certain guys that you challenge, maybe certain seniors that you say, I need to see this from you, everyone needs to see this from you? Absolutely. You know, and there's some individuals you know, you treat everyone in your in your football program fairly, and but every individual reacts to different things. So, you know, one way you motivate one young man may not be the next the same motivation for the other individual. So you have to find ways to get them to perform at their optimum levels. And so you're right. There's some individuals I can get after. You know, I can uh, challenge them and they'll respond. There's other individuals. There's a different way of challenging. But uh, especially with the guys up front, I challenge them because we have high expectations for them. And like I said, the offensive and defensive lines of any program is really the poster child for your toughness in your football program. What you said going back to the full, full padded practice, full contact and all that, that was something Saturday night you referenced as a bit of a concern because of the lack of depth overall. Do you just feel like you have to do it at this point moving forward or because there's an open date next week or will it be the standard the rest? It's the standard. And that's the way we're going to play football here. We're going to be a physically tough, physically tough-minded football team in everything that we do. You know, we call it Tennessee Tough, and it's not just a fancy slogan. And uh, we have to get much tougher as a football team. And uh, I'm not going to tolerate it as a head football coach, not the caretaker of Tennessee football. Tennessee football is not going to be soft. And uh, as we know, uh, building toughness is a process. It just doesn't happen overnight. It's a cumulative effect that occurs in your winter's strength and conditioning program to spring football to August camp to the season, and you have to live it. And, you know, been through this journey before with developing toughness, and uh, it takes some while. But the great thing is, is our players, with meeting with them, they've embraced it. And uh, what do they say to learn how to swim? You got to get in the pool. And uh, we got to get in the pool. What has Lane garnered more carries the way he's played the last couple of weeks? Yeah, you'll see his role continue to increase. You know, uh, you know now he's back to 100% health-wise. You know, the thing we need from him is burst at the second level, you know, and really finishing runs. You know, the one run on our sideline he tried to finish. But uh, you'll see his, his workload uh, start to increase a little bit this week. But usually teams are better at home than on the road. But do you see an inordinate difference between your team at home versus the road? 
I just know that we're going through a process of what it takes to play winning football on the road. You know, and, you know, Jimmy and I were talking in the car over here. I believe every road opponent that we've played have been a top 20 opponent, and every road opponent that we have played have been ranked in the top 10 at some point or some stage of the season in great venues. And there's a toughness, there's a mentality that goes into it. I talk about creating your own momentum, you know, your own opportunities when you play on the road. Just like playing Auburn at home this week, we're going to have to create opportunities. You know, so I think it's a, it's a mindset of going on the road. And uh, I think there's a lot that goes into it. And it takes a mature football team, mentally and physically, to go on the road and win football games. You said you had to go through this before and try to instill toughness. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about an experience <clears throat> Prior, prior, previous to this. Absolutely, I'll give you the greatest example, two of the greatest examples. We were blessed and fortunate my last year at Cincinnati to have basically a first round draft choice at defensive tackle and a third round draft choice at defensive tackle. Derek Wolf and John Hughes and both start, one starts for the Cleveland Browns and one is a good friend of Peyton Manning with the Denver Broncos. And uh, their junior years, I think they'd chuckle if they heard me saying it, but if one was to my left and one was to my right, they'd tap me and chuckle and say they were both soft uh, mentally. And uh, we challenged them. And uh, the way they developed in a year's time is probably the most development I've ever seen in two individuals. And uh, Derek Wolf is tough, he's physical, he's tough-minded. And John Hughes is a young man we spoke about a couple weeks ago who wasn't even being considered for the National Football League. And his senior year, he made a decision, mentally and physically, and we challenged him. And Steve Stripling does a great job. And you know, again, that's something that just doesn't happen overnight. You have to live that each and every day. You have to live toughness every day in your football program. And you just can't talk about it. You gotta be about it. It's gotta stem in practice. You know, it's gotta stem with all the different things that we talk about. And a lot of it is, you know, is strength, you know, and the strength and conditioning. Some is will, some is technique. Some is being in great shape. You can't play physical if you're out of shape. And a lot of it is the way you use your hands. You know, some of it is body position. Some of it is the way you run your feet. So there's a lot that goes into the definition of being tough. How did you feel like Dobbs did beating on the zone reads, his decision making yeah. there? And were any of those predetermined calls? None of them were predetermined calls. And, you know, you'll see some different quarterback runs slowly be implemented into our offense, you know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I thought there were still a couple times we left some yardage out there where he could have pulled the football. But uh, I thought for the most part, uh, he did a very, very good job uh, from that aspect. How much will he benefit the next three weeks from having thrown it 42 times <laughs> in his first start? I think a lot, you know, and I think that shows confidence in him, uh, confidence in the players around him. Uh, but I do, you know, he just didn't go into a game. Uh, against a great opponent and hand the football off. You know, we asked him to throw play action, sprint out, you know, uh, every type of, of route combination you could think of, all kinds of depths from deep to intermediate to short to control passing game to quick game. You know, so we've asked him and it's just the overall level of consistency. You know, we talked about starting the game off fast. You know, we have fourth and four, you know, at the 38, 37 yard line, and you know we have a completion play for a first down, and you know he overthrows it. Why? Because he overstrides in the pocket. You know, and those are all things that he'll continue uh, develop and get better. Uh, on another note, um, for everyone, is Nate Peterman will practice, and he'll be full go this week. So uh, he's done an exceptional job. Jason McVeigh, our entire training staff, has done a tremendous job, and. Uh, and so he'll be full go. I think the other individual uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't speak about is, uh, again, Michael Pilardi and uh, the job that Jason and his training staff did as well in terms of we didn't think Mike was going to be able to kick Saturday. And, uh, you know, you talk about the stress and the life of a head football coach and coaches. He comes to practice on Thursday with major back spasms, and he couldn't even walk. And uh, Friday, it was touch and go. And then Saturday, you know, he has one of his best performances 
of the year. And, uh, you know, we talk about consistency and performance. And, you know, when you talked about the seniors, Brett, and you talked about um, all the stuff of this football team, and when I met with them, I used the greatest illustration. I can sit here and tell you John Hughes illustrations and Derek Wolf stories, but let's talk about our players. Michael Pilardi, you know, here's an individual for whatever occurred in the past, occurred in the past. And he's the same individual physically, he's gotten stronger, but mentally he's completely different. When I looked at them, I said, tell me the difference in Michael Pilardi in one year's time, you know? And, you know, on his, on his field goal attempt, I walked over to him and I said, you know, what do you think in range wise? You know, tell me where you need to get to. He goes, Coach, I can make it from there. And through experience, I know any time you ask a kicker, they're going to tell you, you can, he can make it. And I'm like, no, I, I, you know, talk to me. Where do we need to get to? He says, Coach, I got you. And then, you know, he had the one poor punt, and then he has a great punt. And J.R. Carr does a tremendous job of downing the ball in the two-inch line. And uh, he comes up to me, he says, I got your back. That was for that missed punt, the previous snap. And he's playing with a lot of confidence and belief right now and that's a great illustration for every player in our football program that development process that's part of when i talk about we want it now that's part of the evolution of our football program you know from the apr to academics you want to know why alden howard's playing well alden howard's doing well at school alden howard is one of the first individuals in the building you know, he's early in meetings, he's asking questions, he's leading, he has accountability, not only himself, but he's holding now the other wide receivers accountable. That's growth. That didn't happen in August. That didn't happen in September. That started to formulate in October. You know, those are all great stories that nobody else sees because we see it every day. Well, Tiny played Summit. Go ahead. Tiny played Summit right tackle. Talk about why he did that, and will you continue to do that going forward? We'll continue to move him around, but for that particular game, that was a short yardage plan, and really that was an unbalanced set. So, you know, we had him and Juwan on the same side, and uh, so those are just different game plan scenarios, uh, you know, in our goal line and short yardage packages. You know, next week you may be sitting there, he may play fullback. Heck, I don't know, maybe he'll be in the gun doing the uh, the Volcat package. I don't know, so we'll see. What you consider Nate Peterman the number two quarterback now? It's it's all based on preparation. You know, I think Riley's done a tremendous job and you know it's it's hard for Riley. You know, he's a competitive young man and he wants to be out there and only one quarterback can play right now. But uh, you know just like we speak about every week, you know, is whatever individuals have the best week of practice, uh, They'll put them in positions to play in the game. Coach, you're talking about confidence in the growth of the program. Is Auburn sort of a, an example? They, and, and when Nick Marshall team is developed, yeah. they, they're a different team than the game. Different team. You know, they have great team speed. Um, they play with a high level of physicality. Um, they have great wideouts, you know, defensively. Uh, tremendous effort to get to the football and they're tough and they're physical. And Nick Marshall brings a whole nother, you know, a whole nother element you know, to their football program, but so does Jeremy as well. So, um, yeah, and they have a ton of confidence. And they're a top 10 football team, and very deservingly so. I know you have to be careful when talking about recruiting, that you've been blown out each of your last two games and picked up key commitments on the heels of that. What do you think it says about the program, or what do you attribute that to? Well, I think, first of all, I think people around the country feel it and they see what's going on and like I said sometimes you know the results aren't measured on the field but people see what's going on here they can feel the energy they can feel the vision you know and it's Tennessee you know we're a national brand you know and um, we have a great product to sell and it better yet we have great people here we have a passionate fan base you know I'm all in it's the best place in the country I firmly believe it and I've been around now all over the country and there's only one Tennessee and uh, so it's an opportunity to be to build something it's an opportunity to be a part of something extremely special and uh, it's going to mean more when we get back to being the Tennessee standard of football that we all come to expect and it's work in progress and we have three games left and uh, we're playing for a lot right now in our program 
And uh, again, we have to go back to the fundamental aspect that I talked about in August when I sat up here before you. Focus on the process and the results will come. What does it really take to play winning football? Developing our football program, minute by minute, day by day, hour by hour, week by week, month by month. And I know you guys get sick and tired of hearing me say that, but really, that's the only way you get it. And you know, you have to keep things in perspective. I know this, love is conditional, okay? And praise and blame, it's all the same. You just gotta put your head down and uh, you gotta keep plugging. And I had a, a good friend of mine, a former boss who said, you always find out who's really it when you win. Everybody text messages you. But when you lose, you really find out who your true friends are. <laughs> and uh, your text messages are about cut in half. So uh, on a positive, you don't have to respond as many, but I'd rather be responding to them. You talked about the toughness, but specifically the run defense after what happened Saturday and going in and facing the yeah. rushing offense in the conference. We better get tough. We better get more physical in a hurry. The thing that we didn't do a very good job of is getting off blocks. We call that the junction point. You know, there was a number of times where our three technique got led. And any time the three technique gets led, you're in trouble. And everything about playing great defense and great run defense is gap integrity. You know, when everyone re being responsible for a gap and holding your assignment. You know, it's our linebackers taking their run pass read off the EOL and man on the line. You know, and there's a couple times where he, we've done it over and over again and the tackle's blocking down and our linebackers taking a pass drop. You know, and those are the small details. You know, we've done it over and over again, and they can come to the sideline and tell you. But again, football is a game of, of quick second decisions. Football is a game that's played off of instincts and trusting what you see with your eyes and your eye discipline. You know, and those are the things that we have to get corrected is getting off blocks, maintaining our gaps. You know, not being a gap short because you let a guard reach as a three technique or the center reaching our one technique. That's inexcusable. You know, and that has to do with your hand violence, your pad level, and your overall strain to get to your gap. And we better get it corrected in a hurry because I think they threw eight passes last week. You know, and they have a mentality to run the football. But the thing about Auburn is they can beat you with quick, quick screens. They can beat you with deep balls. They can beat you with quarterback runs. If they decide to line up and, and run power offense at you, they can beat you. And uh, like I said, they're a good physical football team. Thanks, Matt, very much. Thank you.